Okay, let's carry on. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last to be hired and ending with the first to be hired. Those who have been hired at the 11th hour, 5pm, came and received a denarii each, a day's wage. Now when the first to be hired came, they thought they would get more. How much does that sound like to us? When we've been serving God and plodding away, and uh, somebody comes in after you and they get a reward and you don't get the same reward. Mm. How does that feel? Yeah. Not good. Yes, Lord. But we need to challenge ourselves with this passage and ask God that we don't do these things. We don't get jealous. Yes. Those who've been hired in the eleventh hour came and received a denarii each a day's wage. Now when the first to be hired they came, they thought they would get more. But each of them also received a denarii, the exact same wage. When they received it, they protested and grumbled at the owner of the estate, saying, these men who came last only worked for one hour, and yet you have made them equal in wages to us who have carried most of the burden and the work in the scorching heat of the day. But the owner of the state replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no injustice. Did you not agree with me for a denarii at the beginning? Take what belongs to you and go. But I choose to do to give this man, last man hired, the same as I give you. Am I not lawfully permitted to do what I choose with what's mine? And it's like God saying this to us. This is a parable, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. That's what I was always taught. There's something deep in these parables. We need to read them again and again and again, because there's always something more in each one. So I challenge you to read chapter. 20 when you go home or when you have a chance during the week and ask God to speak to you through this. So those who are last in this world or is right, I'm gonna let's carry on. I jumped ahead a little bit. Take what belongs to you and go. But I choose to give this last man hired the same as I give to you. Am I not lawfully permitted to do what I choose with what is mine? Or is your eye I envious because I am generous. So those who are last in this world shall be first in the world to become, to come. And those who are first shall be last. We've heard that saying before. Mm -hmm. Some of them might think, oh, that's unfair. That's unfair. No, it's not. God has a right to do what he wants to do with what it is. And he only gives out to those this passage where it says about the gifts of the Spirit, he gives severally to those he wills. He gives those gifts to who he wants to have the gifts. A bit like King David, really, isn't there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very much like King David and Bathsheba. He wanted her, so he had his wife as a husband killed. Because he, he wanted her. He didn't care what God wanted and what God had told him not to do, he still did it. But, yeah. or, or is your eye evil? I envious because I am generous, you know? Envy. <coughs> We've often heard to say the evil eye. Somebody has the evil eye. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that saying? Yeah. There's something about that person. Well, the evil eye was a jealous, envious eye. The landowner asked if they were jealous because the landowner was generous to other people. The evil eye was an idiom used to refer to jealousy. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, 9 to 11, Beware that there is no, wi no wicked thought in your heart, saying, The seventh year of release, remission, pardon is approaching. And your eye is hostile, unsympathetic towards your poor brother, and you give him nothing, since he would not have to repay you. Because in those days it says, you can lend, but we're not to borrow. You know? We're to give. When we, when we say lend, give to the person not expecting it back. When we give something, we shouldn't lend it, we should give it out of the generosity in our heart. 
God gives things to us. We heard last Sunday night about tithing, and Wayne shared really well on that. You know, that when we were not just giving, it's God's anyway. So all we're doing is giving it back to God. Nothing belongs to us anymore. Once we've been given to Christ, we come to Christ, we have given everything. And we've just given it back. Beware, right, that the seventh year, which in their, their customers, they released everybody from their debts and they allowed them to buy their, have their land back. And it happened on the 50th year. They were all special times that God put so that nobody would be holding something against somebody else. It was released. It was forgiven. We are forgiven once and for all. And if we can't forgive somebody, God cannot forgive you. He says that himself. And you give your poor brother nothing, since he would not have to repay you, for he may cry out to the Lord against you, and it will become a sin to you. If we looked at when I was, we were doing, I wasn't doing Nehemiah today, but in Nehemiah, they found out a lot of people become slaves to their fellow Jews because they, they had nothing and they sold everything. And he said, you shouldn't be doing that to your brothers and sisters. You shouldn't be making your brothers and sisters slaves. You should be releasing them and forgiving them. Since he would not have to repay you, but he cried unto God, the Lord against you, and it will become a sin for you. You shall freely give and generously give to him, the person who has need, not expecting a return. You shall freely and generously give to him, and your heart shall not be resentful. But when you give to him, because this generous thing, the Lord your God, will bless you. Do you know that? Mm. When you give to somebody else, God will bless you abundantly more than you can ask or think. So when we was talking about tithing, 10% is not a lot, is it? When you think about it, if you have £100, it's £10. If you have £1,000, you give £100. You know? But it's not to the church. It's given to God, you are. You're not giving to a person. You're giving back to God that's already his. <coughs> And when you do that and you give generously to other people as well, God will bless you abundantly. <coughs> but if you don't, and it's in your power to give, and somebody is asking you in a desperate need, because God says, Jesus said himself, maybe you have attended angels unawares. But he said, if anybody asks for you a glass of water in mine, and give it to them. If it's within your means, give it to them. And you will know greater blessing in God. You shall freely and generously give it to him. And God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. So maybe, maybe at this time, things are not working out for you. It could be financially, family, whatever you're doing, whatever it might be and you're not receiving a blessing, well, you need to go and consider why. Are you doing what God has asked you to do? Are you being obedient to him? Because if you're not, things will get tougher. But if you do what God tells you, also give generously to those who are in need, then God will pour out that blessing upon you. And you will have your, it says, that there might be food in my house, it says about tithing, but also, that you might have food in your own house. That God will bless you financially, spiritually. God will bless your undertakings. The poor will never cease in the land. Therefore I command you, saying, you shall freely open your hand to your brother or sister, to you, to your needy and your poor. Beware that there is no wicked thought in your heart, saying, the seventh year, the year of release. I read that already, but I duplicated it on my own. Sorry, but there we are. The Bible warns us that we should treat everybody equally. <coughs> there should be nobody thought to be higher or better than anybody else. 
When you call to minister for God, I know I've said it, and I'm going to always say it. Call to a ministry or something. Never think of it as you get a promotion. It's actually demotion. We just read in uh, Matthew as well, the first shall be the last and the last shall be first. If you push yourself forward and you want promotion, it's never promotion and God is demotion. I look at it as... Because every you must be first, become the servant of others. And serve others first and serve God first. As I said, when you've got a gift, use your gift, develop the gift, run with it, study, do whatever you can to build it up in your life and put it into practice. As I said, an evil eye was a phrase in use among the ancient Jews to denote an envious covetous man or disposition. A man who, who was jealous of his neighbour's property, loved his own money and would do nothing in the way of charity for God's sake. Somebody Clark said that. <laughs> I found that somewhere. Envy and jealousy versus the fruit of the spirit. Envy, what is it? A feeling of discontent or resentful longing Aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. That was from Wikipedia. I wouldn't say luck. But what I'm saying is, we can be jealous of the gifts of the people of God, but we need to be concentrating on the gifts that we have got and using those gifts. And praise God for the gifts somebody else has got. There's some things I can't do. I'm not gifted then. And I'm so grateful for my brother or sister that can do that. I'm not good so much at administration and writing letters and doing that kind of thing, but God's blessed us with Liz. Liz is good at that kind of thing. That's and good. Sally can do it. I, I'm not so good at that. I don't know what to, I can preach. I can do other things, but I can't always put it on paper to officially, you know. Praise God for those people who've got these gifts. And to be honest, if I had all those gifts and talents, I'd probably get burnt out too. Mm. Trying to fulfil all these roles that are not my roles. God has given us individual roles and given us individual gifts that only we can achieve. Right, I'm going to bring kind of around to this bit about what I said, what I said about dairy. Before dairy came in and got saved, God was doing a thing in my life and he was challenging me and he said, somebody will come, hear the word, and they will be saved. And I'm going to do a very quick work in that person's life. And they're going to be promoted above you. And I thought, oh Lord, will I be here all this time? I'm faithfully serving you. And, and, I, and I had to repent. This was even before you came, Derry. And God showed me, you brought Derry in. And Derry became an evangelist in the church. And he was gifted. And all I had to, I, I'd been prepared for this, so all my encouragement was to encourage you and encourage other people. Mm. Now in Bethel, okay, me and Wayne might be your pastors right now, but God is raising up other pastors in this church to take over from us. He might take over from us and bring other people, and raise other people up in the faith. We are not here, we may only just be temporary. We don't know, that's in God's hands. But what we must be willing is to step aside. I've got to say it Liz, you did exactly that, and you encouraged us forward. You know, you stepped down and you still got those gifts, but you were also encouraging us and building us up even now. Even when we make a mistake, I'm glad you come and tell us and point it out to us. Because nobody else will. Because we are human and we fail as well. And we make mistakes and we do things without thinking. About consequences. And sometimes we need to be told. You know? So we're just like everybody else and sometimes we might come and tell you something. Yeah. But if we do it in love, Mm. We've got to do it in love and patience. We mustn't get angry with anyone. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Don't go raving at someone because they've made a mistake. Sit down humbly and talk to them. 
and explain to them, okay, please, I'm doing this because I love you, so please, you know, this is how I see it. And that's what we should do as leaders. He and does. as brothers and sisters. <laughs> so we must not be envious of one another. Similar words to envy, jealousy, enviousness, covetousness. And what's the commandment? You must not cover your neighbour's goods or his wife or his lands or anything and get jealous of them. Be grateful for what I've given you, God is saying. We mustn't be greedy and wanting what somebody else has got. We must, the Bible wants us to be content with what we have. Because if you're not content with what you have, God's not going to give you any more. You know, we might take away from you what you've already got if you're ungrateful and you're not thanking him every day for the wonderful gifts he's given you mm. and the blessings and the food and the clothes and everything. We must thank God at the beginning of the day for a good night's sleep but we must thank him at the end of the day for the way he's blessed us mm. and kept us safe throughout that day and what he's given us. Covetousness, desire. That could be an evil desire sometimes, to be better than somebody else. Resentfulness, holding a grudge because you didn't get the position you wanted in the job or in the church. Don't be resentful against somebody else. You do what you've got to do and God will do it for you later on. He will promote you later on into that place. Or humble you, as I say, and put you down, you know, to more you. Another word to go with envy is bitterness. Don't let that root of bitterness grow in you. Because once you allow that in, you're allowing the devil, the demons, to come in and take over that part of your life. Right. And you must repent, forgive, let go, Amen. let go, let God. Amen. We do a lot of deliverance ministry in this church. But sometimes if we are wise, we wouldn't get ourselves into those permissions and be careful and guard ourselves against things, you know? Guard ourselves against temptations. It's not a sin to be tempted, it's a sin to actually carry out that temptation, yeah? Discontent. Being an happy grumbling, moaning and complaining. <laughs> I've been here for that long and that person's up there doing that and I'm not doing nothing. Mm. That's your fault, you're not doing anything because you're not doing what you've been told to do. What you've been given, gifting in. Mm. And then they grumble and then they moan to people outside the church. See it happening. I've got to be honest with you, I didn't want to preach this today. I see them moaning to other people in other churches and it puts us down as a church. Yeah. So let's be careful what we do and what we say. Envy is an emotion which occurs when a person lacks, or what thinks they lack, somebody's superior quality, achievement or possessions, and either desires it or wishes that the other lacked it. Oh, that's dangerous. Because almost by putting a curse on someone, you can easily put a curse on someone. So they gift won't develop because you're jealous of them. And the words that you use towards that person. So let's encourage one another in these things. And you see somebody, oh, that's great. Please keep doing that. I enjoyed what you did today. I got so much out of it. Not, oh, that wasn't any good. And I'm not even going to speak to that person. Uh, you know, I should have been doing that. But we do it. I've done it in my own life. When God has put other people up, uh, what I thought was promotion, and I was, it wasn't just there, the others God brought. <coughs> and I had to wait. I had to wait 30 years. Or, you know, even longer, maybe 40 years. 30 years, not 40, I'm not wrong. <laughs> 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 but I was, about, I was about 17, 18 then. Yeah. So we'll do the maths. I'm not brilliant in maths. <laughs> You're but what I'm trying to say, took that 57. long. I'm not. I'm younger than that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you said 17 and 14. I'm 53. But anyway, it took that long. 
because I had things in my life that weren't right. I had probably envy, jealousy, malice, pride, pride that I thought I knew it all more than anybody else. My God had to take me and put me on the floor and humble me. I was a teenager and I was not a very nice person. Although as a Christian, I was pointing my finger at everybody. You, you were wrong. You mustn't do this. You mustn't be doing that. That's what I was like as a teenager. But bang. When I submitted my will and life over to God, I always refer back to the 12 steps, you know, because that's really helped me. Submitted my will and life over to God and be humbled. There was a prophetic ministry around about that time. And I don't know if Derry will remember this, that there was a David in the church. David Lane? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. No, no person particularly. There was a spiritual David in the church who was actually, God was going to take through the wilderness and hiding and running and ducking and diving because of the enemy, because of Saul was chasing David and he was in hiding. And God said, that's you, Sean. You were the David. But until I can use you, i got to break you. i got to break you and humble you so that then I will raise you up. 30 years on plus onwards. And look what God's done. Nothing's impossible with God. Amen. God. All things are possible with God. But to us it's not possible, but he can do all things. He changed my life. To be jealous is to feel resentment, bitterness or hostility towards someone because they have something that you don't. This feeling or the state of feeling this way is called jealousy. Jealous can describe someone who is feeling or is prone to jealousy. That's from dictionary.com. I'm going to read now James chapter 3, verse 14. You know my favourite parts of the Bible, dear. Proverbs and Ephesians. What comes in third is James. Because James is the Proverbs of the New Testament, if you look at it. It's all about wisdom. And being wise. He cautions those who wish to be wise. If you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart... Don't cover up the truth with boasting or lying. There's another aspect of looking at jealousy. You boast about what you've got because you say it's better than what somebody else has got. You boast about your gifts and your ministries and you boast but God wants you to be humble and he wants you to encourage the others who are weaker in the faith than you. I got to preach this message and I didn't want to, but please, I have done this myself, so I'm talking to myself here. That was in the NLT. In the Amplified Bible, James 3, verse 13 to 18. Who among you is wise and intelligent? I'm certainly not. That's why I need to learn the wisdom and read the Proverbs and study them. So that I would become wise and ask God for God's wisdom. Because I'm not. I do things which I shouldn't do sometimes. I say things before I think. I speak, say before I really thought it through. Who oh, among you is wise and intelligent? Let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with gentleness and humility of true wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be arrogant, and as a result be in defiance of the truth. This superficial wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, secular, natural, unspiritual, even demonic. Think about it, demonic. You think you're wise in your own eyes? You're not. I'm not. Far from it. 
For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing a morally degrading practice. But the wisdom from above is pure, morally and spiritually undefiled. Then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, and willing to listen. Sometimes I find that hard. Sometimes I think I have the answer first. And I know what to answer the person. But sometimes I've got to listen. Because especially if we're ministering to somebody, they know what to do. They know what the answer is. But sometimes we've got to allow them. Because once they say it, a bell goes off in their head. i got to do it. That's where my problem lies. You know? But the wisdom from above is pure, morally and spiritually undefiled. Then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, willing to listen, full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteous hypocrisy and self-serving guile. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness, spiritual maturity, is sown in peace by those who make peace, by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals. Every one of us here is called to be a peacemaker. Some of us like drama, some of us like chaos, but that's, we shouldn't. We should want peace. We should be the ones who bring peace to a situation, not more anger and I take that one side and you take that one side and it becomes a battle. You know, we need to be wise. Harmless, wise as serpents, harmless as doves, Jesus said. Now let's look at the next bit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is a biblical term that sums up nine attributes of a person or community living in accord with the Holy Spirit According to chapter 5 of Epistles to the Galatians, we read that, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, I like the Amplified because He puts these bits in brackets and He helps me to think about it a bit more, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience. Not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Some of us are very impatient, aren't we? We want everything done yesterday. And God is teaching us a lesson. In his time, everything is beautiful. In his time, Ecclesiastes says about that. I haven't got that up there, but what I'm saying is we must wait and how we act while we are waiting. We don't get angry, frustrated, it's not happening, the prayer is not being answered, when and how and where we want it. It will happen in God's time. How we act while waiting is not always very good. We take our eyes off Jesus, and we put our eyes on the situation. Mm -hmm. We must focus on him, not the situation of him. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Shelter in the time of need. That's a very old hymn. And he is. So whatever's going on, focus on him. In the trial, in the difficulty, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. What's faithfulness mean? Anybody got a definition of faithfulness for me? Trust. Believe. No. To be faithful is to continue in the thing God's got you to do in until he leads you on to another thing. Whatever the storm is, whatever the problem is, being faithful to that thing that God's told you to do, your gift or your ministry. Mm. Doing just that until God decides to take you further. Gentleness. How many of us are really gentle? If we look at ourselves and examine ourselves, sometimes 
we want to be better than anybody else but we must be gentle with how we talk to people how we act around people show them love even if they're doing something that we're not very pleased about or very happy about we still have to have gentleness and love yes we often have to say well please don't do that it's the wrong way you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble but being gentle is not just how we touch someone it's how we react mm -hmm. to someone it's out of a heart of love self-control how many of us today need a dose of self-control me <laughs> <laughs> but you know i put my hands up to that i need to I learn self-control <laughs> But we must be working on these uh, fruits of the Spirit. Before you develop in anything else, work on the fruits of the Spirit. Are these working in your life? If they're not, ask God. God might have to take you through an experience to develop that in your life. And I'm not going to read uh, verse 20. I'm going to go on to the next section in verse... No, verse 20. I'm going to go to Matthew again. 20, verse 20, I think. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> this is another lesson, and I'll be coming to an end then. This is all in this chapter of Matthew 20. Talks about the bit I missed out is talking about Jesus telling them about what's going to happen. He's going to be mocked, scourged, crucified. He told really warned about it. But let's look at preferred treatment asked that's the heading I've got here then Salome that's what they believe it is the mother of Zebedee's children James and John came up to Jesus with their sons and kneeling down in respect asked a favour of him and he said to her what do you wish she answered him command she wasn't asking she was telling him to command that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit in positions of honour and authority, one on your right and one on your left. I've got a funny feeling it doesn't say it. And maybe James and John will put that up to it. Yeah. Because they didn't want to ask Jesus themselves, yeah. they put their mother up to it. Yeah. And how often do we put, we want to ask somebody a question, but we put somebody else up to it. Yeah. So that if they, if they do the wrong thing, <laughs> If they do the wrong thing, then they have failed, not you who have told them to do it. <laughs> right? That's what I see in that. I don't know if it's exactly the case, but that's what I see in the story. Command that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit in positions of authority, one on your right and one on your left. But Jesus replied, You do not realize what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup of suffering that I am about to drink? They all said yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we do this. And when it happened, they all ran away. Scared kittens. And that's just like us sometimes. They answered, we are able. How many times have we said that? In our own strength. We are able. He said to them, you will drink my cup of suffering, but sit on my right hand and on my right left. This is not mine to give, but it was for those whom it has been prepared by my Father. I'm going to jump to verse 28. No, I'm not, no, I'm not going to read that now. So we come in to the end. We're running out of time. But Jesus says to us, the most important lesson we need to learn here today. If you want to be something in the kingdom of God, you must humble yourself and become the servant of all. Yeah? You must become the servant of all. You must humble yourself. Don't be envious. Don't be jealous of somebody else's gift. Because every gift in the body is important. It's like me saying my little finger, I don't need you anymore. But it's important. You can't grip things, or the thumb, or the big toes. It gives you a sense of centre of balance. They're all important, even the smallest member. And what you might think, somebody who cleans the toilet is not as important as the past, is, is not important 
as a pastor or a leader, Jesus says they are just as important, if not more important. Because if we didn't do that job, we'd all be sick. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If they didn't do it. So let's bow our heads in prayer. And remember that verse in scripture. I haven't got it on there. But it's, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there's any wicked way in me. <coughs> and lead me in the way everlasting. So let's ask God to search us, that we haven't got any of these roots of bitterness in us. If you have, confess it to God, and ask God to deliver you from the root of bitterness and envy today. Louise is going to just play something now. For me and Louise will stand at the front if anyone needs prayer. It doesn't have to be about the sermon, but it can be. If you need help and support today, we pray with you. If you need prayer for healing, come to the front or put your hand up and we will minister to you.